Hello, and welcome to a Dunder Mifflin-sponsored episode of We Only Look Thin. I am your host, Michael Scott. Uh, actually, I'm Donald Weigel, and with me, as always, is my lovely bride... Catherine Weigel. And, uh, hi, welcome to Dunder Mifflin. <laughs> I have lost a little over 100 pounds. How much weight have you lost, darling? I've lost about 150 pounds. If you add up the 25 years of... Weight loss and weight gain, I've probably lost like 2,000 pounds, yeah, but I don't want to brag. Yeah. I don't want to brag about it. So uh, I mentioned Dunder Mifflin and Michael Scott. Those of you who are uh, fans of The Office or will pretty know. pretty much any human on earth. Yeah. Worth their salt. Yeah. Yeah, worth their salt. <laughs> Do people say that? I don't know. Is salt even that expensive now? I don't know. Um, I uh, If you... Our fans of that show, you'll know it is The Office, and uh, we're going to talk about workplace eating and how to stay on track at work. We did an episode uh, very recently about uh, if you're if you're at home all the time. If, and now, o- if only I worked at home, then I could lose all the weight. Yeah, and then everybody who's working at home is like, if only I went to an office, I could lose all the weight. It's kind of like a Freaky Friday situation. Like, for some reason, you're Lindsay Lohan, and then you get caught up with... Uh, yeah. Whatever, Kathy Lee Jamie Gifford. Lee Curtis. Oh, Jamie Lee <laughs> Curtis. There's so many Lees in there. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you're uh, you're swapping with somebody whose middle name is Lee. If only we live in an if only society. If only yes, our life do. was better or different, then uh, we could lose weight. Well, we're going to n- knock you down your worth of salt uh, today. By- <laughs> <laughs> that's a thing people say. That's, that's definitely, definitely a thing. That knock you say. down your worth of salt. Uh, but before that, we're going to do a tip of the week. Pow! And then at the end, we're going to do a product of the week. Product of the week. No pow. I don't know. I don't Product know of the we week st- to you. <laughs> <laughs> we are we are not a professional business. We're just uh, two kids just losing weight and trying to impart knowledge on other people. I don't know what you're talking about. We are professional weight loss moguls. We uh, are. Internet tastemakers. We are what we say we are. That's but, what I've been told. So before we talk about uh, the working world, we're going to talk about the tip of the week. Tip of the week to tip you. Tip of the week to you. Tow. Tow. So- Give or take, I've been eating for 44 years. Uh, give, give or take. <laughs> on and off. On and off, for mostly on for 44 years. Uh, and uh, I buy groceries. This, pr- this, uh, this tip of what? the week. What? This tip of the week is to- uh, This keep, is genius, by the way. Catherine came up with it. Keep a list of all of the foods in your refrigerator on the outside of your refrigerator. Yeah, you know how like you go to the store and you have great intentions of buying, you know, you buy like all the your leaf lettuces and your your cucumbers. <laughs> well, and your heat and serve meals. And your heat and you serve buy... meals. And you're going to, you know, you're going to the best of intentions of making a salad or, you know, you buy, you buy your fresh vegetables. And then what do you do? You, you leave them in the back of the drawer them. and you forget that they're in there. Well, and I work from home, so this is for uh, anyone. I shouldn't be saying you do this. This is what I do. Yeah. Uh, so I realized last week that I let a lot of food uh, go bad because I forget it's there. It's in the back of the refrigerator under a bunch of other stuff. And uh, so if something goes bad or if something is inedible, I, maybe you make a bad choice with what you eat. Maybe you get takeout because you don't remember what you've got in the fridge or yeah. something goes bad before you eat it, which is something that I do. So I actually went grocery shopping the other day. And as I was putting stuff away, I made a list uh, to put uh, on the little magnet board on the refrigerator. I bought chicken and it had an expiration date of, you know, a week from now. So I put down the expiration dates and what uh, what meals I have the different vegetables that I have, and the frozen meals also that we have in there. So I've got a full list of everything that uh, is edible in our home. Not every single thing, but like... Yeah, all you the, know, you know, the things with the expiration dates. And look, if you don't want to go that detailed on it, just you could just put a note on your refrigerator that's like, you have strawberries in there. You have raspberries. Well, like, don't forget who, to eat them. Who hasn't gone into the crisper and been like, what the heck goop yeah, is at the bottom into of some, the drawer? Like, like brown liquid science experiment. Well, and you, so you have these intentions, and then uh, they don't go well. Especially like if I just have a couple things in the fridge, I'm fine. But once the fridge is packed, I don't know what is behind door number two. Like I don't <laughs> do not remember. So it's having, a zonk. It's definitely a zonk. But also for someone who works at home, 
I go like, oh, I'm so hungry. I just want something right now. And then I'm like, oh, well, I do have a frozen quiche. I can just eat yeah. that. Or, oh, gosh, that, you know, fajita uh, Trader Joe's uh, heat and serve meal is going to expire in two days. I should probably have that for lunch. So I'm not a huge planner. I'm not a meal planner. I kind of buy a bunch of stuff with the intention of cooking them. But uh, so far, this has helped me stay on track and realize, uh, make prioritize what I eat based on expiration dates. And uh, maybe I'll post a picture of it on the interweb so that people That's can see. That's a good see. idea. It's just Ooh, one of those maybe little... Maybe you could make a printable. Oh, uh, but it just is helping me kind of stay focused on what... Notice how have. I just gave you homework to do. <laughs> do not give homework. Uh, I was just going to post uh, the list on... Uh, sure, that sounds ...on great. Instagram. Uh, and it's just a little magnetic board thing that yeah, I got. Yeah, So great. Anyway, so that is the... Remind t- yourself of what's in your fridge. That is tip of the week to tip you. Tip of the week to you. Tao. Tao. All right. So many, many people have jobs. Work. If only... I could plan for that. <laughs> yeah. And many people go to those jobs. They do. And I'm going to start out perhaps. And many people have to eat while they're at those jobs. Many people eat daily. Uh, Every single day, some people. So I'm going to start out with a bummer. Uh, a bummer from the Center for Disease Control. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> those party years. We're kicking it off with a bang. So uh, a study was done by the C. DC. DC. Sorry, I was looking at, it's from CBS News. CBS posted from the CDC that 70% of calories consumed at work came from free food in common areas, meetings, and at social events. Boom. 70% of food. That CBS posting from the CDC hit me PDQ. (laughs) That was pretty funny. Uh, (laughs) I LOL'd. Yes, Uh, you did. So if you go back to episode 33, 365 Surprises, you'll see that- Fantastic episode of this show, by the way. Let's say you don't work weekends. You work a five-day work week. That's about 250 days a year that you're at work. Roughly, not including holidays. And let's just say that 70% of the calories that you consume in an eight-hour day- are from surprise foods. Yeah. Like, that is a whole free lot. Free foods at work, yeah. Nothing free is free. So um, pour yourself a cup of ambition, and we're going to talk about uh, working nine to five, and we're going to talk about the pitfalls and what we can do to take some of our life back. At so the uh, trick question. You work nine to five. When does your work day really start? Ooh. And we'll give you at home. You four- want to say 9 a.m., don't you? You want to say nine to five. I don't actually know that anybody works nine to five. I don't know anyone who does. But, but it makes a great song. I'm not going to diss Dolly Parton for her nine to five. Like, working eight to five does not really sound as good. <laughs> working eight to four thirty. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know. Except for... Early leave days on Fridays. I'm working again. nine to six fifteen. Yeah, yeah, no, she she should do a version for every single <laughs> work situation. Like I work flex hours. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, perfect. Um, so anyway, uh, so Donald, ask me the question again. <laughs> if you work nine to five, when does your work day actually start, dear? Your work day actually starts the night before. What? It does. 24-7. Holy cow. You start your day. Let's pretend it's Monday. You actually start your work week the night before with your mindset, how much sleep you've gotten, and how much preparing for the week you have done. Yep. Uh, Which in some cases is none. We act surprised that we need maybe food for breakfast like, or food for lunch. For example, we went grocery shopping earlier today, and I thought about what I was going to eat for the five days I was going to be at work this week, Monday through Friday, and I made sure that I had I had appropriate food for five straight days. And uh, I work from home, so I, I have stuff in the fridge that'll work for me, but we're focusing on being at the workplace, so... Planning the night before what you're going to take to work, what uh, you're going to have for lunch. Not everybody brings in their lunch. We're going to talk about social situations. We're going to talk about going out to eat. Uh, There are so many different ways to make a a work week successful. But acting like it's a surprise that you're hungry in the morning and that like, oh, I... 
what am I to do? I woke up at seven o'clock and I have to be at work at eight. So I'm just going to stop at Starbucks for 15 minutes and get a coffee. And oh, wait, there's a donut place next door, which is something that I did for yeah. 10 I mean, years. Most people have to, and not me actually, but most people have to get to work at the same time every day. So how long it takes you to get to work, what time you have to get up in order to get there, what time you have to you know, leave yourself in order to eat your breakfast if you're a breakfast person should not be a shocking surprise. These are things that you can control for the night before. And here's another bummer for you all. Um, why did I just say that? <laughs> <laughs> because you're working nine to five. Here's a bummer for you all. Um, you need to get a good night's sleep. And, you know, we did it for years and years. We stayed up we and just watched Seinfeld reruns because Seinfeld is amazing and awesome. And forcing myself to get into the pattern of going to sleep early, like I'm in bed at nine and I have lights out before 10, like every single night. Well, when work allows. And I am so much better off for it. I know that sounds miserable to some people, but getting that good night's sleep and getting up early so I can have time to pack my food, so I have time to exercise in the morning, which in our case is walking or rebounding, has made all the difference in the world. And not to mention the fact that getting that good night's sleep so that I am refreshed and I make good food decisions all day has been huge. Well, and we talk about rush hours. Oh, it's rush, rushing around, yeah. rushing to work, rushing to get to my desk. Oh, don't worry. I don't need to plan anything because there's free snacks in the snack area. Like we put ourselves in a position where I think it's actually a loophole where we make ourselves behind so that we're running late, we're running behind so that we we rely on those free snacks or those, you know, indulgent donut excursions to to fill our calories for the day. And that all that sugar makes us hungry. So we we are reactive to our work week instead of proactive. Now, so the 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 work day starts the night before with any kind of planning that you can do. And that doesn't mean that you have to make frittatas. <laughs> oh, <laughs> continental. It is. But it doesn't mean you have to make like, you know, a thousand meals in advance, but just having the the wherewithal to know like I'm going to be hungry, so I need to have a couple of frozen breakfast things in the freezer that I can heat in a minute in the microwave instead of going to the donut shop. Yeah, I eat a lot of uh, I do eat a lot of fruit. I eat a lot of things like carrot sticks. I make sure I have uh, fresh vegetables every day, but I basically survive on convenience foods. I don't do any real cooking and I have lost a hundred pounds doing it or not doing it. <laughs> um, so I don't personally believe there is any shame in um, buying pre-made meals. I get these pre-done soups from Trader Joe's or from Whole Foods that have reasonable calories that are uh, that really fit into my plan. Um, I buy frozen meals. I, I'm a vegetarian, so I eat a lot of like pre-done you know, veggie burgers, veggie chicken fingers, all that sort of thing. Um, and I control for calories first and foremost. Um, I eat yogurts, which are pre-portioned. And um, I am able to, without doing, you know, any real cooking, keep to my calories. And I believe eat healthy or at least healthy-ish foods. Well, and I think too, and we talked about it and we kind of joked about it too in the working from home episode that we just did. People who work in an office think, if only I was at home, then I could control what I was eating. And finding out that 70% of the calories consumed in an office place come from free food is really horrifying. And it's something that I did for decades. I didn't need to do a study because I studied <laughs> it all in my mouth for 20 years. Studied it all over the but, place. But let's talk about some pitfalls of the workplace. Well, and first of all, freedom is not free. I shouldn't say freedom isn't free. That's from uh, Team America World Police. Free food is not free. There is a price to be paid for that. And just because it's free is not a good reason. And I have made a rule for myself that I do not eat the free food at work. I just don't do it. Um, I, I bring my own stuff. And that is a giant bummer to a lot of people. But um, it is what 
it is what has worked for me. Yeah. So um, going on to the pitfalls of the workplace, there are a thousand reasons working against you for making good decisions. There is workplace stress. There is free food in the kitchen. There's, uh, you know, fast food lunches with colleagues or restaurants uh, that you can go to. There's free vendor snacks. Like the vendor brought in the popcorn thing. You got to eat the vendor snacks. You got to eat the vendor snacks. Um, there's no, you don't. There's there's uh, other uh, food pushers that are selling Girl Scout cookies and cheesecake and popcorn for their. You want little Jimmy to go to space camp, don't you? You'd be a fool not to. Well, and Tim from accounting brought in his grandma's homemade whimsy bars, and <laughs> you can't pass those up. Well, there's uh, baked goods. Uh, there's party leftovers. I had a party. I had a Super Bowl party last night, so I brought in the fifty uh, bags of free Doritos that yeah. weren't eaten at the party. They're just trying to get you to eat it so they don't eat it themselves. Exactly. There's Bagel Fridays. Maybe your Sally Bagel Friday, like. We're not blaming this on everyone else. Like this is stuff I pretended to have a kid do you selling mean Girl Scout Catherine cookies. Bagel Friday. <laughs> I do. Uh, let's call her Catherine. Let's call her the woman who secretly ate a bagel in her car after she bought bagels for the office. I would secretly eat two bagels. Thank you very much. <laughs> I would. Get, Sorry, I didn't mean to under. Uh, no, I would. Sell you. I, I've talked about it before, but I would. You know, for the office because I'm a team player. Yeah, um, I'm not you're a team doing player it for the office. I am a lone wolf who. Uh, uh, pushes food on other people. I would buy uh, a dozen bagels for uh, for the office. I'm quoting. I'm I'm, I'm doing air quotes <laughs> She's right. Literally now. doing air quotes right now. Um, I would get a thirteenth bagel, or maybe they'd give me a baker's dozen of bagels. So I would get a bagel to eat in the car on the way to work. Um, I would secret eat a bagel in the parking lot before I went into work. Yeah, and then I would say, "Hey, bagels at nine o'clock, everybody!" So then I'd have a third bagel. Uh, by the time it was nine o'clock, bagel friendship time, and then I would just put the bagels in the kitchen, and then I, you know, sneak in there when no one was looking, yeah. and I'd get another bagel. So I'd probably be four bagels deep by noon. And, and then, your favorite TV show was Bagel Friendship Time. <laughs> I actually used to have something called Super Happy Friendship Time uh, that I planned at work that definitely <laughs> revolved around snacks. Um, <laughs> yeah, as as most things do. Oh, no, it was called Super Happy Fun Time, yeah. actually. But the, there's nothing super happy and fun time about eating free food all day. And then going to the Cheesecake Factory for lunch, which I would also do. So yeah. I'm four bagels in. Cheesecake Factory for lunch. And if you've and, ever been there, you know their portions are not small. No. Uh, so then there's there's the work late surprise. Also, I got to work late. We got to order what? takeout. So then you get more food. There's the three o'clock slump where suddenly you need a pick me up. Oh, yeah. There's uh, there's uh, your your boss who keeps a, a bowl of M&Ms in her office just to grab and go when you're, when you're in the office. Or there's like the receptionist has a big thing of free candy at the front desk every time you go by to go to the restroom you grab the key free candy yeah it's everywhere there is no surprise that food uh, helps you get through the day at work but it also got me to 300 pounds yeah. uh, when i started uh working where i work i was about 175 pounds uh thanks to diet pills uh and then by let's see i started thanks in, diet pills thanks, diet pills thanks ephedra who needs a regular heartbeat not me um <laughs> When I started, I think I was 173, yeah. and then uh, three and a half years later, four years later, I was 300 pounds, like all from free food and lunches and happy hours and yeah. you know, secret car eating. And that is the price you pay for all of those every five days a week indulgences. And we as grownups are able to make conscious choices about the decisions that we make surrounding food. And I did not think that that was possible for the first 20 years that I worked. And um, now I'm in a position where, um, and I, I started losing weight before I started um, working from home. And Donald, Donald also works in a place where there's there's catering trucks every day oh and goodness. free food yeah. abounds. Yeah, they... I get free lunch in air quotes, free lunch every single day, lunch that I do not pay for with my money. Um, yesterday, for example, there was literally a pizza buffet set up in my office and pizza is one of my favorite things on the face of the earth. Um, and I just didn't eat it. Um, and it, it's not easy and, but I have just separated those things in my mind. The work food, um, is not 
my food. Like there is a person, two people actually, whose sole job it is is to put out free snacks for the crew as we're filming these TV shows. And I can eat as much of that as I would like and nobody will blink twice about it. In fact, the the particular guy I just worked with seemed personally offended <laughs> because I wouldn't eat that stuff no matter how many times I explained to him like what I was, you know, why I was wasn't eating them, etc. He would feel personally offended by it. So it, you know, trust me though, I have, you know, lived most of my life just eating whatever I felt like, um living on impulse and if I can manage to avoid this, you can too. Well, and I think, too, we our inner monologue about work and how much, you know, I've said I was put upon, underpaid, whatever. Like, for me, food was a way to self-soothe. It was a way to um, avoid work. Like, oh, I got to go into the – get the water in the water cooler. Oh, look, I forgot there's, you know, a free thing of Doritos in here. Yeah. Like, I'm going to eat that. But we, we say it isn't fair. Everybody else gets to eat whatever they want. Like – you know, Jim in accounting uh, runs five miles a day before work. Like, that must be nice. If only I had a kind of life where I could do that. Like, but, you know, I got to watch those Seinfeld's reruns. Yeah. Um, and and look, and this isn't about willpower. I'm not saying that I've developed some sort of great willpower. It's not about that. It's about putting place in place habits that allow me to get through these days, habits and practices and rules for myself that have allowed me to get through these days without indulging in all of these things. And that number one thing starts with, and I know this is going to bum people out, I bring my own food to work. And I know that costs money. I know that costs time. Um, but you don't have to do it all at once. But I bring my lunch and then I eat on a schedule. I eat my lunch, and then I have a, a 3 o'clock snack, a 4 o'clock snack, a 5 o'clock snack, 6 o'clock. I eat every hour. I eat a reasonable, roughly 150 to 200 calorie snack the rest of the evening. And if I know I'm going to be there super late or if I get stuck super late, um, I do not allow myself to eat treat foods until I am within striking distance of going to bed. Because once I start eating treat foods, I don't stop. So I have this plan in place. I don't allow myself to get super hungry and I don't uh, allow myself to eat the food that anybody else brought, only what I brought. Well, and two, I think that idea of, you know, you you say, okay, well, I don't have time to meal plan. I don't have time to prep. I, you know, I can't make Pinterest worthy meals. Like, there is no shame in getting a lean cuisine or a microwave ready food, bringing in five for the week yeah. and just having them. Like it is not sexy. It is not fancy, but it gets the job done. And if you are in a situation where you've got a cafeteria at work, maybe you've got f like free lunch there, or it's just the norm to go out to lunch, setting some parameters around what you eat. Like you don't have to get the giant entree when you go out to lunch. You can get the the side appetizer or don't get uh, a dessert every time you go to the Cheesecake Factory, which I definitely did. Like not every meal has to be a total party that results in that crash afterward where you want to go sleep in your car because you've just had seven pounds of fettuccine Alfredo. Like, yeah, there will be other opportunities to have treats, I promise you. Like, they will come along. Like, every single time you eat lunch out, if that if that is what you end up having to do, um, does not have to be the greatest meal you've ever had. You can look at the menu, you can find the lower calorie option, and you can go for that knowing that somewhere down the line you will have an opportunity to eat the really delicious food. Yeah, so so plan ahead, whatever it is. If you're the kind of person that ends up getting a donut or a croissant or stops at the, uh, the Jiffy Mart to get the breakfast sandwich, Plan ahead, go to the grocery store on the weekend and get Special K has these like little uh, breakfast sandwiches that are 260 calories. Like you can still have something that's grab and go that's probably going to save you a few hundred calories and not get like the side of McHash Browns on the side, which I definitely used to do. Um, so did we already mentioned episode 33 of the show, 365 I surprises. Did. Oh, okay. I did. So go back and listen to that. It's yeah. great. 
And you can also, with the Lean Cuisine meals or the frozen meals, you can pump up the volume. Pump uh, up the volume. Which was episode 18, where you could uh, be at home and steam some broccoli or cauliflower in the microwave before work. Bring that to work with you and pump up the mac and cheese that you brought that's frozen. Like, there's lots of ways to add, so you're not eating just, like, sad salads. Um, you can eat something delicious, maybe semi-homemade, and, uh, and it doesn't have to be sad food. Yeah, I found these great um, fresh burritos at Whole Foods that I've been hooked on lately. They're 350 calories, um, and uh, I've been eating a lot of those for lunch. I do things like hard-boiled eggs, yogurt. Uh, I do apple slices, berries. Um, I cook these like these veggie meatballs that are frozen. I heat them up and put some pasta sauce on them for like 150 calories um, as a snack. Uh, I I don't even count the calories for carrot sticks that I eat. You know, I do a little baggie of carrot sticks, cherry tomatoes, just like things to keep me from getting super hungry that I can eat all day long, but are things that I like. And if none of that sounds appealing to you, I'm sure you can find 150 to 200 calorie um, snacks that sound good to you. Yeah. And I think, too, the our morning self is the one that has all of the ambition for the day. They're the ones saying, okay, you know what? Today's the day that I'm not going to eat the office snacks. Today's the day I'm not going to go out to lunch. And then in the moment when presented with the surprise free tray of brownies from Jim and Accounting or a surprise your boss wants to treat you to lunch at a restaurant that you couldn't afford, our in-the-moment self throws our hands up in the air and, say, and says like, oh, well, I don't have a choice. Like, oh, it'd be rude not to indulge. It'd be rude not to join. Like, we're going to this fancy restaurant. Like, I, I'm i going to get their world famous, uh, you know, tiramisu, whatever it is. In the moment, our current self, our impulsive hedonistic self does not want to abide by our, our bummer morning self who yeah. had the best of intentions. And ne- not negotiating with yourself is huge like there are so many food pushers food is social food is delicious food's delicious like that is such yeah and there's there's like body hunger and there's head hunger like there's hunger that you that you feel you know because you're genuinely hungry and then there are things you just want to eat that you're hungry for and um we have some helpful tips for dealing with some of the food pushers at work yeah but that like not negotiating i do not eat food presented to me in buckets or bowls or baskets or tins. Like I will not do that at work yeah. because that's 70% of calories. No one's bringing in, you know, in, unless, you know, it's a, a sh- super rarity. No one's bringing in seven pounds of navel oranges to share. Like <laughs> people are bringing o- the, the leftovers that they don't want in their house because they're too tempted. They're bringing in indulgent foods so that they feel better about eating the food. I did not, I'm telling you, I did not bring in bagels or donuts for anyone because I cared about anyone. I brought them in because I wanted to eat them and I would make it look like I was a nice person when really I just wanted an <laughs> excuse to eat the food. You've, like You've got people fooled. They think you're a nice person. I am not. But do not negotiate with terrorists. Do not negotiate with the snacks and the free candy. And I'm just walking by the desk and they've got the free M&Ms. Like nothing free is free. And there is a high price for those impulsive in the moment choices. Yeah. And look, in terms of food pushers, getting back to that, if somebody is pushing food on you and you feel like it's going to be too much of a conflict just to say no, just take some. Um, Pretend to eat a bite or maybe have one bite and then go around the corner, throw it away. And if they ask you about it later, say it was delicious. Um, Well, and people want to make themselves feel better about what their choices are. And even if you've got someone who is super healthy and they're judging the food that you're eating, like I have had situations where I have been on a calorie uh, restrictive plan and someone has been like, oh, you're never going to lose weight if you eat a cheeseburger or, oh, you're never going to lose weight or, boy, that's a giant salad or that giant, that, that salad's too small. Those people are the worst, by the way. If you're one of those people, stop it. 
Yeah, and don't do it to other people. That's like, what I'm just, saying. Just don't do it. But it's not like there's some arbiter in the world of the perfect sized lunch or salad or portion or food. It's not Goldilocks. There's not too hot, too cold, too big, too small. Like, stop commenting on other people's food and don't engage in conversations where people are judging your choices. Like, if, if, like for me and Donald, we do not eat breakfast. It, it Once I start eating, I want to continue eating. So I am only eating um, afternoon and it is helpful for me. But you don't have to tell everybody what your plan is. You don't have to tell people you're intermittent fasting or counting macros because someone's yeah. going to have an opinion of, I feel like I'm suddenly on like some like, uh, political show. Well, let me tell you something. But like everyone, <laughs> but it's like you don't tell you don't tell people your baby's name ahead of time because everybody's going to have opinion an opinion. You wait until you've already had the baby and then you tell people what the name is. But you don't have to announce like I'm on Weight Watchers. I'm on keto. Like you 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 don't have to tell everybody what your business is. You just you know, can say, I'm not eating that right now. Yeah. And uh, Forbes had an article about um, food pushers and they suggested stop labeling your plan, kind of like what Don was just saying. Um, if someone says like, oh, what are you doing? What are you uh, say, you know, I don't think labeling my food choices is in my best interest. Uh, it's not helpful. And you don't have to engage in the conversations of, well, you know, my cousin did Lindora and it was great for them. Or, you know, if you don't have a green smoothie in the morning, then you're not blah, blah, blah. like, yeah, like you're at work to work and negotiating your food choices or, or defending your food choices. It sucks like to be like, cause then it leads to secret eating too, because if you're, if you go to lunch and people think you're on a diet and think you can only have a small salad. Like, oh, they've got salads on the menu, Catherine. Like, oh, did you see they got salads? Yeah. Like, then you secret eat because you don't want to deal with the shame of being like, well, I could really eat this appetizer because I planned for it. Like, just negotiating all of that is is just a recipe recipe for disaster recipe for disaster which is also the name of our new uh cookbook that's coming out <laughs> soon um another uh, strategy for the food pusher is to blame your doctor um you can just say look my doctor uh my doctor won't let me have that my doctor said i can't um and that you know if you appeal to somebody's sense of authority that oftentimes can work um, say you're not hungry is another option. Look, oh, I just ate something. Oh, I just, I couldn't say you just brushed your teeth and you don't want to have to do it again, or that you think it'll taste, you know, it, it'll taste bad because you just brushed your teeth. Or you've got a thing tonight. Like, oh, I got a thing tonight. So I'm saving up for that. Like, that's not that's a priority a good one. for mine. Yeah. yeah. That'll... Look, and finally, you can just say no. You really can. What? Uh, People might have their feelings hurt. They might keep trying to push you. But honestly, you can say no. Ultimately, no one is going to stand up for you except you. You know, you, as Catherine likes to say, you have to be the champion of your own choices. And um, if you can't advocate for yourself, nobody else is going to. And so just saying no, listening to Nancy Reagan's advice from the <laughs> 80s and just say no, it does work. Well, and to the, to, to the, to the, the drug reference of the Nancy Reagan's, um, <laughs> food, food is engineered to be hyper palatable. That means that it is there. There are mad scientists who are making it as crunchy and <laughs> salty <laughs> and sweet and savory all at once to satisfy those urges. How'd you but like my mad scientist laugh? It was great. Thank you. It was you. super good. Thank you. But it is hyper palatable. And there have been studies that shown that food like that, the packaged foods, the foods in the vending machines, uh, foods provided in buckets and tins and, uh, and bowls are all engineered to release like a, I don't know if this is the right term, but like a dopamine that gives you that rush yeah. and that, that sugar rush. And then that, Rush comes with a crash. And once you start on that, that horse train or the snake or whatever, what do they call it? Heroin? <laughs> ride if the you snake. Know, if you yeah. know what heroin is. Well, heroin is horse, but then you ride the snake. Okay. I don't know. <laughs> um, but once you- <laughs> I learned everything I know about drugs from Saturday Night Live. Once you start, 
it is very hard to stop. So not negotiating with yourself in that manner, not starting that habit is is so important because like even at you have the lunch and then you get really tired and sleepy and so then you want more candy to help keep yourself awake. Um, so I've got I've got a couple of ideas for the three o'clock slump. Oh, Can I pass those I can't on? wait to hear them. So you know how it is. Three o'clock suddenly. I'm you're... having a three o'clock slump at one thirty. <laughs> you're you're I plan, always ahead of time. I plan my three o'clock slump for one thirty. <laughs> but there's that. I mean, and I used to do it all the time. It was like, oh, I need a pick me up. Oh, hey, let's walk over to uh, you know to the bagel shop next door and and grab a, a muffin or something like that. Um, so I have some ideas for the three o'clock slump. First, plan a low brain power work activity. Ooh. So if you are at three o'clock and it's like, ah, I got to work on this big project and it's stressing me out, do something low energy for 30 minutes. Organize your files. Um, organize your desktop files. Delete your emails. Like do something that isn't really uh, super Or if you're on a break, you could crochet for 10 minutes. You sure could. Um so plan something easy for that time because I think we turn to food when we want to avoid doing a, a challenging task at work. Um, have something like, oh, at three o'clock, I have uh, the sparkling LaCroix that I love. Like, oh, make, I love the, the LaCroix. Like change the narrative so that you're planning something in advance. Oh, at three o'clock, I'm going to have uh, a coffee and I'm going to delete old emails or I'm going to organize my email inbox or I'm going to o- organize my files or whatever. Like plan something that's brainless so that you don't have to worry about avoiding that stuff. Um, Some people say I can't do anything except plan things that are brainless. <laughs> well, that's not the show hey, we have. Those people are mean. They are mean. Um, so planning for that downtime. There's also the risk if you if you do have that three o'clock indulgence that isn't satisfying, like say you have candy or something like that or a soda, suddenly before you leave the office, you're starving. And yeah. this used to be me all the time. I would say like, okay, I'm not going to have anything. So I would be, I would drive home. I would pick up our daughter from school. I'd be in a really grouchy mood because I was hungry and she yep. lost her, her, uh, her lunchbox and we'd have to really walk around campus. Mood. I'd have to get in steps looking for her lunchbox. And then I would get home. And by the time I walked in the door from grabbing groceries or from, um, you know, walking around the playground looking for a sweatshirt for 20 minutes. I would walk in the house and I would open, I would crack open a tub of delicious hummus and crackers. Yeah, no. Hummus packets That's make the sound a, hummus makes. Sure. Crack open a crack open a cold tub of hummus tub and of hummus. drink it down. Tub o hummus. <laughs> um, Our favorite brand, tub o hummus. I would uh, open up a bottle of wine. I would crack open a tub of hummus <laughs> and some crackers. I just like saying crack open a tub crack of hummus. Open. No one has ever said that. But I would eat a thousand calories of crackers and hummus. Uh, while I was prepping dinner. So um, to get back to the tip. I think it's funny that you crack open the hummus, but you just open the crackers. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> Don't you crack open crackers? Crack open the crackers. Um, so, uh, so going back to my tip, do not leave work hungry. Plan a protein-rich snack for like maybe a half hour before you leave work, whether it's a hard boiled egg or a, um, a pre-tracked or pre-planned thing of like 200 calories of almonds, something like that, some cheese. Yeah. If you, if you try to throw protein into your snacks, they help you stay full. They help you feel full longer and it takes longer for your body to break those things down. And so you don't, uh, it, uh, staves off hunger longer. Do you think you just get really bored with healthy food? Like if you eat something with protein, is it that you metabolize it better or is it just your body's like, ah, all right, I guess I got to do this. <laughs> so it sort of distracts it. Probably. I like to think about it, about it that way. Yeah. Um, but have something to eat before you leave work or keep something in your glove box that is uh, a satisfying snack. A hundred calorie pack of popcorn or bring, like Donald said, a baggie of carrots to eat in the car. Don't arrive to your final destination hungry. Do not go to the grocery store after work starving. Do yeah. not make the excuse that you need to pick up something for your kid or your spouse um, and then be like, oh, well, I was just getting vegetables for the week. And then you end up 
in the candy aisle and yeah or stop and get gas and then end up with a gas station egg salad sandwich which i've absolutely never done that is donald's if you want to i'll give you our (laughs) p.o box number if you want to mail donald a uh a convenience store yeah convenience store egg salad sandwich sandwich. yeah i have a weakness for those i know it sounds terrible but they're delicious but that that position that we put ourselves in where we're running late in the morning so we grab something at night we're starving so we had no choice but to stop at the fast food place we put ourselves in all of these situations where we're victims of too busy too late too rushed to get anything done and there are healthier alternatives to all of those things you go into a convenience store and all of them now have refrigerated sections with cheese and yogurt and apple slices yeah you and, dive and hard boiled eggs and they're usually in you know very conveniently small you know portion sizes too but when we're starving when we're depleted when we feel put upon we make those indulgent choices and oftentimes those choices are in secret i would eat a meal in secret and then go home and eat the healthful food and the more we put ourselves in a situation where we're behind you know stressed out not planned the more impulsive choices we're going to make. And knowing that 70% of the calories that we eat in a day are free, there's nothing free about that. Like, And and I did that for decades, like actual decades of thinking that I had no choice. And if I had just loaded up the freezer with five frozen meals on Monday so that I was sure that I had a meal on hand, if I had put together – um, some low calorie snacks for the car, a hundred calorie pack of nuts or a hundred calorie pack of popcorn to eat. Just small things like that. We're not talking about meal prep. We're just talking about taking responsibility for all of your indulgent workplace food choices. Yeah, I leave emergency food all over the place. I have I have emergency food at the freezer in the freezer at work. I have it in my desk drawer at work and I actually carry some shelf stable, two shelf stable like small meals in my backpack with me all the time so that I always have something in case I'm at work later than I think or in case I'm hungrier than I anticipated and I end up going through all of my, you know, pre-planned food. Um, and it's really saved me a few times from just reaching for chips or for chocolate or whatever in those situations. Well, and two, we're not saying to not enjoy food at work. Oh, yeah. But if you've got, you know, Bagel Friday and Candy Thursday and Cheesecake Factory Wednesday, if every single day of the week at work you're eating a surprise 500 to 1,000 calories that you hadn't anticipated, like that is pounds a week that you're gaining. Yeah. And I did that for decades. Yeah, the the point here is to make your choices mindful, is to, you know, you're planning. You're not just on the fly ending up with an extra 500, 750,000 calories that, that continue to add up and add up. You're making your choices consciously. You're not just eating because you're bored or because you're stressed. Um, and managing your stress is a huge part of this. And that for me, stress eating has been a big, big thing in my life. And one of the things that I realized, one of the real eye openers was that I used to just use my stress as an excuse to have a treat. I'd be like, oh man, this has been such a hard day. I really deserve X, Y, or Z. Well, doesn't matter what I deserved or it doesn't matter, you know, how stressed out I was. I was using that food to self-soothe myself and it was turning into calories and turning into pounds. And just even recognizing that I was doing it was a huge step. And I am now able to stop myself from doing it on a regular basis because I know when I'm doing it and I recognize that old tricky self that was trying to convince me that I needed those things. Um, So if you can, you know, do things like get enough sleep, um, try meditating, try, you know, stepping back from your stress, just try and get your stress under control. It helps me tremendously with my eating. 
Well, and in most cases, unless you're at a call center, you can stand up from your desk for a few minutes. Um, I've talked about it before, but I had um, a receptionist who was a smoker, and she would take smoke breaks three times a day, and I must be nice to it. Yeah. Uh, gee, must be nice to smoke, definitely. <laughs> but I got to the point where I was like, oh, you know what? I'm going to walk around the building for five minutes while she's on her smoking break. Like, that was my trigger to go do something positive. So if you're in a stressful situation and you can go walk to your car and back, say you forgot something, just get out of the office for a couple of minutes, change the the pattern of behavior of walking to the lunchroom every time that you're stressed out or turning to food. Um, going back to like planning those indulgences, if you want to enjoy Bagel Friday and ba Bagel Friday is huge for you, enjoy Bagel Friday, Friday, but forego Happy Hour Tuesday. Like make some choices about the indulgences that are important to you. Yeah. I will not have anything at work, but I love birthday cake. So anytime there's a birthday, I'm going to enjoy birthday cake. But other than that, I'm not going to have free snacks. I'm not going to have um, free vendor food. I'm not going to have people's leftovers from the parties that they had on the weekend. Like make some choices in advance about what is really important to you regarding snacks. Because I had like janky, you know, off-brand Chex Mix that I would just eat because it was there. Right. Like and it wasn't even something that I really enjoyed. Yeah, but like make it something you actually care about at least. Yeah. So – Choosing in advance, I do not negotiate with food at work. I plan ahead. I keep snacks on hand that are beneficial to me. I do not turn to ch free chocolate at three o'clock. Like setting some standards for yourself will help you avoid turning into the me that I was for years, saying that I had no choice and that I was a victim to it. Because like if Donald can get through the daily gauntlet of free beignet trucks and free taco trucks and soft serve ice cream trucks, sorry to trigger with all these delicious sounding words. Yeah, but all of those things uh, showed up in like the last week of our uh, the season of our TV show. You know, keeping the frozen meals on hand for those times when you are hungry and need something extra, keeping shelf stable foods on hand. Like if you improve your choices by one day a week if you take back one day that's great yeah you do all of these things in baby steps you don't have to jump from zero to doing what i do overnight um and i didn't do that either i gently changed my habits i i worked on a plan i found out I figured out a plan that would work for me and I slowly and steadily made the changes. And now I don't even really think about it. It's just what I do. Like, you know, spending that half hour a day prepping my meals in the morning is just what I do. It's not, it's not painful. It's not a, you know, a chore. I just do it. It's just my thing. And if you, if you build these things into your life enough, um, it can be that way for you too. Well, and two, um, do we – ask me if we stay up and watch Seinfeld. Anymore. Do we stay up no. and watch Seinfeld? Oh, whoa. <laughs> we don't stay up. Sorry. Haha. -ha. I was trying to be funny. Um, uh, it worked. We go to bed earlier. Like it is boring, but we go to bed earlier and we don't scroll uh, Instagram until 11 o'clock at night, which makes us exhausted, which makes us wake up late, which makes us want something sugary to pep us up in the morning. Like yeah. we have changed – the, the circumstances haven't changed, but our reactions have changed, and it has made all the difference. And for those of you who say that you can't control yourself at work, like that is a grown-up choice that you are making. You are not a victim to your workplace. You are not a victim to Janice who brings in, you know, her homemade pierogies uh, uh, every Thursday. Janice. Um, I was trying to think of a name of somebody I don't know or her, who yeah. like, isn't somebody There's around. There's probably a listener named Janice right now who just unsubscribed from our <laughs> podcast because she's so mad Janice, we're so us. sorry. Um, we weren't talking about you, Janice. No, not you. Just the hypothetical Janice. Yeah. But the more control we can have over our choices, even if your day is 50% better, even if it's no morning indulgences, like you're taking some of your week back. And for everyone who says that you can't control yourself at work, you know, I'd be better off if I worked at home. 
big surprise. You've got Saturday and Sunday where you also say, it's a random, it's so, I got so much going on. I can't yeah. control what I'm eating. Yeah, like, the same people who are like, oh, Monday through Friday, I can't do it at work. And they're like, oh, the weekends, there's no structure. What do I do? So there is always an excuse to be made as to why we cannot control our habits. And once we realize that nobody is going to advocate for us, no one is going to set up this perfect life where, you know, all they serve at work is, uh, you know, Vendors are bringing in celery sticks for everybody and just tossing them out like dotted bills. Like, yeah. that's not going to happen. Vendors love bringing in crudite <laughs> trays. <laughs> crudite, y'all. Um, so we have to take our day back. You can't win clients with crudite. <laughs> Nobody got a client from, yeah, radishes. Um, so be the champion of your choices. Make some hard choices about what you are willing to compromise on, what is really important to you. And look at the trajectory you're on right now. Where are these free habits getting you? Where is this 70% of your calories getting you every day? Because if you're even gaining a pound a month, two pounds a month, suddenly you're 12 pounds up a year later and you don't know what happened. What happened was the free lemon bars that Janice brings in. Like, and the-, the And they weren't free. The pick-me-up bugles that you have in the afternoon. And the, <laughs> bugles. <laughs> the pick-me-up bugles. Um, but all of these little choices, 300 calories at a time, we wake up 10 years later, our 30s are over, and I'm, I'm saying my 30s are over, and suddenly I'm up on the scale, uh, 50 pounds, and I am full of regret. And your morning self knows what is best for you. Go back and listen to the morning self who has the good intentions yeah. because they are the ones looking out for you. Your in-the-moment self with the uh, grab-and-go Snickers minis is not the one that you need to listen to. Exactly. Uh, and speaking of things to listen to, some other episodes of the show to listen to uh, as a, you know, maybe if you haven't listened or maybe you need a refresher course. Um, episode 34, what to expect when you're expecting company, uh, which is basically about family coming to visit. But I think there are a lot of great tips in that episode that relate to dealing with uh, workplace surprises. And episode 18, Sisterhood of the Traveling Hot Dog Warmer. Oh, what a good episode. <laughs> it was funny. <laughs> Which um, gives a lot of tips about what to do when you're uh, eating we, out. We used to travel with a hot dog warmer, so uh, that's why that's funny. Yeah. So it's super funny if you're us. <laughs> um, and now I think it's time to move on to our product of the week. Pow! Pow! Hello, everybody. This is all Donald. I'm just going to sit back and stare into space. Our product of the week is not exactly a product yet again, um, but a website. It's called, it's myachievement.com. It's basically achievement. It used to be Achieve Mint, M-I-N-T, but I think that these spelling uh, confused people, so they changed it to myachievement. Now I'm com. confused. <laughs> and essentially... You sign up and you agree to be their guinea pig, um, which sounds awesome, I know. But um, for me, I I linked my Fitbit to their website and their app on my phone, and uh, they give me points for doing things I was going to do anyway. Like Camel Cash. It's like but without Camel Cash. cigarettes. And um, so... Tracking my steps or getting a certain number of steps gets me points. Tracking my food gets me points. Uh, logging water gets points. Uh, tracking sleep gets points. And then they'll have other things on the website where they'll ask for survey questions. Um, and if you answer their survey questions, you can get points. If you refer other people, you can get points. And once you get 10,000 points, you can turn them in for 10 cold hard dollars. Um, they will actually... Um, send you 10 actual dollars after 10,000 points. And it takes a very long time to earn that $10, but it's for things I'm doing anyway. So why not? Um, I'm, you know, I'm going to track my steps anyway. I'm going to log my food anyway. So it doesn't matter if it takes me six months to earn the 10 bucks. It's free money. Um, and uh, if that sounds interesting to you, uh, you can sign up at myachievement.com. I will also put a link in the show notes. If you use the link, I will get more points. <laughs> and um, it's uh, it's very cool. And they actually do give money. I have, I have cashed in a few times and um, it works. So something free is free. 
Mm. Something free is free. Yeah, and the government is watching you every yeah, step you take. Probably. Every leaf you if rate, the government wants to know fine. how many steps I get every day, he's right here. It's fine. Yeah, it's good. Um, and that is your product of the Pow! week. Pow! So um, you can find us on uh, many outlets, including Facebook and Instagram and Twitter at We Only Look Thin. Yeah, at me, bro. <laughs> um, and uh, we, you can also find us at WeOnlyLookThin.com. And please subscribe to the show wherever you subscribe to podcasts. And uh, you can also email us at weonlylookthin at gmail.com. And we are so grateful for all of the uh, iTunes reviews. But I have, I'm going to switch it up a little bit today. We have a robust listenership. We have a dedicated number of people who uh, listen to the show and love us. We're, we're acclaimed. If you could, if you don't have time to go to iTunes and post a review or a rating, if you could tell one person you know about our podcast. Yeah, that would be great. Like, I, it, if we can grow our audience and grow our breath, think of all the people we can help to get it done. And so if you can take a minute out of your time to share uh, our inspiration with someone that you know, um, we would really appreciate it. Like we, we love the response that we're getting, but, uh, but we'd love it if, if you would tell people about how awesome we are. We would, and we would super appreciate it. If, uh, if we could get some more people listening, uh, that would be great. Yeah. So, uh, so thank you so much for listening. <laughs> if you like us, tell somebody else that you like us. Yeah, and tell them how to use a podcast app. I have. We have a neighbor. He's like, "What's well, a podcast? I don't know what a podcast is." Yeah. Uh, so tell somebody what a podcast podcasts are is. great. Load it on their phone for them. That would be great. So, uh, so thank you so much for listening. And so the next time that your boss is getting you down and says things like, that's what she said, and Jim in accounting brings in the muffin tray that grandma baked, just remember that Catherine and I are an, an inspiration Asian. The information that you hear on this podcast is for informational purposes only. The hosts are not medical professionals. You should always consult with your doctor, nurse, or other certified health professional before beginning any diet or fitness program.